Hey guys, welcome back to Season 2, Episode 3 of Hardcore Minecraft, where you guys see me trading, getting those emeralds. That's the focus of tomorrow's live stream, is a full inventory of emeralds is what we're going for. But you see me just doing my chores in this episode, however, is tearing down that huge rock mountain area that you just saw and I'm complaining that I'm on day 69 and no wandering trader yet um, but the big mountain and I give a great view of <laughs> my town right here I was trying to actually get flint um, to keep getting more emeralds but thought I'd include that clip um, but I'm going to be tearing this entire mountain down so this is the before um, and originally I was thinking of doing, like, a dripstone kind of design. But then the bees, because I've been focusing on breeding them so much, really just kind of spoke to me. And I kind of let that lead the way with the design. So right now I'm just cutting and terraforming and I celebrate this pig right here because he's been chilling on that block since I came into this world um and the beautiful sunset and yeah this is kind of, I say after ish because I'm this is so far from what it looks like in the end but I'm constantly constantly like I said in last episode just grinding but I'm working See, I said here, imagine all of it is dripstone because that was kind of the original concept before I settled on the beehive theme. But I'm just terraforming again back to the garden after more emeralds and just repeating that cycle over and over because I really want to make everyone a master in the village just, I guess, to say that I could, but also just to be able to constantly get emeralds eventually get an emerald beacon all that fun stuff down the road so you see me just going after my crops and i've been so desperate for a wandering trader um i think i actually get two during this episode um but no small drip leaf still no moss unfortunately um, but I do end up getting um, melon seeds from one. So I'm just going, 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 upgrading these guys, trying to buy as much stuff as I can. Um, I completely forgot that I could buy bookshelves from the librarians. That would have helped me a lot from how I had to hunt around. Um, but here you see me flipping back and forth because from the village I'm building in, Literally on the other side of the hill is there's this village and I in the 70 days never even noticed it So I you see me go through the whole thing um, I do end up fencing this one off like my village But then I don't think I show it but later on during this episode. I come and still all their um, Like work tables and stuff, but there's a huge ravine dividing this so I try to make it safer for the villagers but also just be smart about it so I don't fall in holes if I ever come back this way um but yeah so many ravines in this world to explore but I try to just for one keep all the villagers safe and block everything off with fences and this huge huge hole into that ravine but then I'm moving beds around to because I'm going to cut that house off <laughs> but I end up um, kind of fencing everything off like I did with the village that I've settled in. And I kind of am running around just showing you I've fenced everything off. I got these two guys. I don't know what happened if this was glitching. I couldn't get the boat out from them. And then I was panicking that if I hit one of them, I needed an escape plan because one of the golems would for sure come after me just doing my round around the village making sure everyone's inside double checking that everything's fenced off the huge ravine and then this is where i find a pillager tower and this is like i i spent so many hours just scouring the map i found a is this a tundra village um nothing that great 
this is where I get sweet berries. Um, and then I do end up upgrading, which I don't show in here, my butcher all the way, and he'll buy sweet berries from me, which is just epic. But I just check out more generation. I get headbutted by this goat right as I'm coming up the hill. Rude. But just again, checking out the natural generation of everything. I loop back around into the flower forest, which then goes through this swamp, but then connects to my area and I put my bed in the water. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but everything kind of just full circle connects. And I'm back at my village, unloading, still contemplating on the dripstone idea at this time in the video. Um, but then I really start to work on the bees, expanding them. This is when the other side, I think, got them. Um, but they all disappeared, so I ended up moving them over later in the episode, you'll see. None of them ever end up hanging out on that side so we move them over and get them going there back on to the stonks game my librarians end up selling a lot which i'll end up showing you guys maybe in the live stream tomorrow because yeah we're going for full inventory of emeralds and then i want to spend all of them on <laughs> upgrading everyone so I'm going to need some chest space to just dump all the crap. But this is where I'm like, okay, my enchantment set up. I'm bringing everything up to the top of this mountain hill thing that I've been tearing down. And here's my first wandering trader. He doesn't have anything good. I do um, full transparency, end up killing him. Well, I kill the llamas first. And then three days later, he's still hanging around. So I do end up killing him later, which you will see. I do show the clip. <laughs> but he's a wandering lead salesman, and we're just going to leave it at that. But I do get back to terraforming and essentially tearing down pretty much all of this cliff, hill. I don't even know. It was um, a pretty phallic-looking object at one point, but making progress and I, this is where I do end up killing him but shh, we'll just ignore that <laughs> I just wanted another one to spawn and I don't know if that makes any difference if you kill them if it speeds up the spawn rate of another one something else I should verify add it to the list but I'm just back to terraforming back to destroying this hill thing going at it from underneath and this, I think at this point is when I'm like, I, I kind of want to turn it into a tree and make a beehive like you saw in the thumbnail. Because that's what I end up creating. The amount of iron shovels and pickaxes I go through to just terraform things is crazy. I do end up breaking the chest there, and my books and enchantment stuff goes everywhere, but I don't show that. <laughs> but again, here I am, doing even more terraforming, just trying to raise everything up so it's not so much ups and downs and hills right there. And then the pillagers, which now seem to be showing up in two rounds every single day. Um... Yeah, not a fan of them, and I'm obviously refusing to kill the captain because I'm literally right next to a village. I live in one, basically, until I build my main house. But this is where I'm settled on the tree idea, so I'm trying to terraform to build up to where I'm going to start making the tree. And I like bring out the hill a bit here, like I said, terraforming. I would love to make that more like a cave type thing going in there. 
but we'll see. And then I chop my way out the front. Start trying to clean that up a bit. And this is why I'm extending the bees even more. Or I guess the beehives. And this is a progress shot of the formation of the tree starting with my dirt tower. And then this is another progress shot, which it kind of looks like a crescent moon there now that I look at it. Um, but there was something about it I wasn't loving, so I knew I needed to do some more work. And I'm changing the hill, and I'm terraforming, and I'm cutting wood back, and then I'm adding it just a lot of, as everyone knows when you build, running up, changing stuff, running back, checking it out, repeat, repeat, until it looks a little bit more like I want it to, and I realized I felt like I needed to kind of integrate the tree into the hill at least a little bit better here, so I kind of am changing things around for a while. Um, and it doesn't stop because when I get to the beehive, I have to do that a lot. So I start gathering all my stuff. You can see this is where I start placing and I made the whole thing out of wool. Um, I would like to maybe integrate like concrete and stuff, but that'll have to be left for later. I also do want to end up changing the tree a bit more, like extending it up and putting leaves. Right now, just is a leaning over tree with a really, really fat, heavy beehive. But I don't like it there. So I keep trying to make alterations to it. I'm towering with dirt, I guess scaffolding, using dirt as scaffolding. And I keep expanding and changing it. And then I keep kind of, like I said, coming down. I hate the way that looks right there. So, you know, I run back up, do some changes. I added, took away the second brown, added another yellow. Still not loving everything. Um, I got the exile because I took one of the, I guess, I don't know, the guy that has the banner out a bit killed him had milk with me so that's how I got that advancement but again just up and down and up and down and changing it and I end up changing out and removing all of the orange I don't like it you'll see that in a bit um but I think I end up at this stage absolutely hating that so I take the lower half of it completely down which is what you see me doing right here it's just, it, something's off about it. And it even changes from the final form. I do end up cutting off the like three or four on the sides to kind of not make it so round and fat, but you'll have to see that kind of later. But I do end up adding in, I guess the honeycomb blocks and then some honey blocks later. But I, you know, change stuff, step back, change stuff and so on, as you do with builds, of course. I make a few mistakes here thinking that I could attach um, ladders to honey blocks, which unfortunately doesn't work. So, and I end up having to move the entrance into it, like two blocks forward, I think, in the end anyway. Um, because as I get inside, and you'll see messing around here, removing the dirt, um, placing down the enchantment table, I need more room, but I do end up getting and smelting glass and making yellow glass, which you'll see doing that on the floor and then um, that's when I added in the bookshelves and I am really haphazardly doing it um, and I can't quite get to 30 levels so no drip leaf but 
jumping up and down, but then I come and plant my melons. Yay, 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 yay. Which will be great for more emerald production. Because they grow crazy. Same with the pumpkins. But here's my yellow glass. I take it up um, and kind of put that on the ground. And then, like I said, put out the enchantment table. Get the bookshelves going. I really goof it all up. <laughs> but I do end up fixing it down the road. And we do end up getting, I believe, everything fully enchanted. Um, but I didn't realize that I could mess up placing down the bookshelves that bad. Thankfully, obviously, my librarians sell more because I just end up chopping these because I don't have silk touch on it at the time. So they just become books again. Um, but, you know, just a lot of trial and error in the tree, in the terraforming, in the beehive, in the apparently placing all of my bookshelves down. But, you know, in the end, we end up getting there after I readjust the entrance, readjust the, um, as I say, crafting table, the enchantment table. And then here's more pillagers that just like, they just don't quit. They're one of the most annoying things to me because they show up at least once a day, but most times twice a day since I'm staying in the village and working and working and working there. They just keep showing up. But we do end up bringing a barrel in with our lapis and all of the enchanted books I've already bought from all of my villagers. Um, but then, yeah, we enchant all of our gear, which is epic. And don't worry, I'll improve on all of these. I do end up showing you like more of a 100% real-time <laughs> breakdown of what all the enchantments on my armor at the end of this episode are anyway um but in the next one i work on them and i can show you guys in the live stream tomorrow that um i do have quite a bit of different things on there already because i've still continued to grind for it but there i am dancing super pumped on my enchanter achievement and then i like i said show you guys what i end up getting as the enchants on everything but yeah i'm hoping to max them out with the best enchantments that i'm aware of that you can get on everything but i still need i think i need to i think i have a few more diamonds but i still need to make like a hoe and later on i do make an axe and i make another pickaxe so i can have a fortune one and a um silk touch one but that will come in the next episode. You'll see me with them kind of moving forward. But yeah, I am I do end up slimming down the sides like I said. But I run in to show you everything just to give you an overview of all the books that I currently have. And my lap is down there. And then I do have my... Um, bow enchanted that I show you right there and then I do put in the honey blocks and the honeycomb like I said put in the windows to get some natural light in there as well but yeah that is it for this episode I will see you guys in the next episode but also like I said Mondays for live streams but thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next hardcore um, bye